So, welcome. We've done a couple things with our new universal gravitation force. Um, again, right, reminder what the different symbols mean. Let's look at what Kepler first said in his first law, which is that our orbits are actually ellipses. And one way to really kind of emphasize the ellipsedness of it is to show the orbit of a comet. So if we show the orbit of a comet, show that right the direction and the distance as it travels around in this elliptical path is right um, not constant in radius. So if our path is not constant in radius, right, our distance from the sun to the comet, the distance from the sun to the comet, the distance from the sun to the comet changes. So as it changes, this r, the distance from the agent to the recipient, changes as well, which means that the force changes. So as we ask this question, are the forces constant, if we're in a non-circular orbit, like an elliptical orbit, we can't say the forces are constant. Are the forces isolated? So we could draw a system in which both the sun and the comet were in the same system, it's usually done for a multivariable calculus class with physics involved in it. So we don't want to do that. It's a little bit more than what we want. We want to just consider just the comet itself. And if we consider just the comet itself, then we have a force right, pointing back at the sun. And so this sun and this force right, is our force of universal gravitation. And so we can take a look at that and say, hey, we have a force, so our system is not isolated. If we ask if the torques are isolated, we have a very interesting question. First, we can see graphically that this magenta line and this green line are in opposite directions. And that's the case for all five of these. And in fact, it will be the case for all of them. But let's show it a little bit nicer, a little bit more mathematically, in case you say, don't believe me. Well, we have our torque is equal to R cross F. Our F, as we saw, is equal to negative G M A M R over R squared in the R hat direction. And our radius, we can write as R times R hat, right? That's our definition of the R hat or the definition of R vector is we can do that. So what we can do now is we can see that this is a scalar and this is a scalar, we can bring them over here. So we have G M A M R over R squared times R, and we can get some cancellation. It turns out it's not going to be all that interesting because what's left over here is we have a cross product, and we can have in that cross product R hat crossed with negative R hat. So we can see graphically that they're 180 degrees apart, or we can see mathematically they're 180 degrees apart. No matter where they are, if they're 180 degrees apart, this is equal to zero. So we're saying that our torque is equal to zero because our R vector is parallel to our force vector. Well, now we can say, hey, the torques are isolated. If the torques are isolated, what that means is it means angular momentum is conserved. We have no outside torques, so that means that R cross MV initial is equal to R final cross MV final. So as we look at this co comet's path along here, as it goes from here to here, it increases in radius, even in my bad drawing. And so if it has a larger and larger radius, right, if this gets larger, then in order to stay constant, its velocity has to get smaller. We've seen this before, right, talking about, um, right, uh, with... <laughs> Talking about cur curving through areas, if we look at this area and we look at this area, 
Well, I drew it badly, but if I have these areas now, this looks like Kepler's second law. So Kepler's second law was actually saying that angular momentum is conserved and that as you have a larger and larger distance, you have to have a smaller and smaller velocity. Or if you're coming back here and your radius is decreasing, then your velocity would increase. So you could also have that. So this is another way to look at what's happening in an elliptical orbit. In an elliptical orbit or any orbit, our angular momentum is conserved with gravity. And that's because of right this r hat comparing to this r hat will always give us an r hat cross negative r hat, right? We didn't have to do anything past that. Any time that we are doing any sort of orbits, but especially elliptical, we have that our angular momentum is conserved. Thanks a bunch.